Hi everyone, it's Olivia. In this video, we are going to be making a one-sheet, eight-pager Rizzo zine without the use of Photoshop or any graphic software. So we're actually going to go old school and try to do everything as manually as possible. So we are going to create three different layers of artwork traditionally and then sending them off to the Rizzo to be printed in three different ink colors. And what we're actually going to be using is the top glass scanning platen, which is like the photocopy function of the Rizzo. So as I understand it, the Rizzo actually is originally marketed as a high-speed, high-volume printing machine towards institutions like schools, churches, and government buildings and offices in order for them to be able to print flyers, pamphlets, and forms really quickly. And it's actually really easy to just print a copy of your document on your printer and then walk over to the Rizzo and photocopy that into thousands of copies at a fraction of the time and the cost that it would take to do that on a traditional laser printer. But for the purpose of this video, we are going to use the photocopy function to create our zine. And in fact, the machine has some very interesting photocopying presets that we can look at and explore further. So this zine is actually going to be very laid back and experimental. And I'm going to try to create some interesting textures and use different kinds of mediums so that it'll be pretty interesting when we send it over to be printed. And especially for those who are learning to work with the Rizzo for the first time, I think that this is actually a really approachable way to get to know more about the machine, get to know how it reads your grayscale values, and also get to know how the layering aspect of it works. So yeah, without further ado, let's get started. And the first thing we're actually going to be looking at is how to fold one sheet of paper into an eight-pager zine. All right, so now we're going to fold this sheet of paper into an eight-page zine. So the first thing I'm going to do is to fold it in half lengthwise like this. Then I'm going to open it up and then I'm going to fold it in half crosswise like so. Then I'm going to open it up again and then using this middle crease as a guide, I'm going to fold again crosswise so that your sheet of paper will be divided into quarters crosswise. So now as you can see, there's a crease down lengthwise through the middle and there are three creases crosswise that is dividing the sheet of paper into four rows. So now we need to cut this section right here and to do that I am just going to fold over once crosswise and I'm going to take a pair of scissors and just follow this middle crease and just cut along it and I'm going to stop where this first crease is. So I'm just going to actually go a little bit past that so this is the crease where we're going to stop. Now, I'm going to unfold everything again, and this is how we're going to fold the sheet of paper into an eight-page scene. So first, I'm going to fold it back lengthwise like this, and then I'm going to take this and fold it over once like so. And then I'm going to take this other side and fold it this way like so. So, then I'm going to take the whole thing and fold it in half. So now I'm going to number all the pages. So as you can see, we have now folded this one sheet of paper into an eight page scene. So I'm going to unfold everything so that we can see again how this has been folded. So this is the sheet of paper and this is how it's been folded. So as you can see, the middle section is being folded outwards and then closed up like this. So let's see what this looks like unfolded so that you'll know how to lay out your artwork or your zine. So as you can see, everything on this row is oriented towards you and everything on this row is oriented away from you. So when you're laying out your pages to figure out what page numbers are on which section of the paper as well as which way it should be facing, it's good to make a mock-up like this 
and follow along so you can see that this is page one and it should be facing towards you and it should be on this section. So yeah, now we're ready to create our zine using this as a guide. So I hope that you found that tutorial about how to fold the zine helpful. The actual paper we will be printing on is a cherry colored cardstock, which will look really interesting with the Rizzo inks. When you are working with card or cover stock, I'd like to remind you that it's very important to score your creases before folding or else the paper will crack. So I've done that for my cover stock as you can see here. So I'm also just creating guides so that I can roughly see where the pages are going to be and make sure that I've covered them with art. The final zine will be printed on an 8.5 by 11 or letter size sheet. So this zine is going to be a spring sakura themed zine and actually I'm thinking of making a series of four of these in four different colored papers, one for each season. So let me know in the comments section below if that's something you might be interested in seeing in a video as well. Here I am looking up a reference for the zine from the cherry blossom reference video that I recently uploaded. So please consider checking it out if you ever need reference videos for cherry blossom specifically. So I just paused and took a screenshot of a still that I wanted to work with for inspiration purposes. I'm not, of course, trying to make something realistic or photographic for this scene. I'm just trying to get a feeling and a sense of what I want to convey. And here, I love that each branch is just full of delicate blooms. And I also enjoy the contrast between the soft colors of the flowers against the dark branches that are making a crisscrossing pattern everywhere. So getting started on working on the first layer, it's actually done in watercolor on cold pressed watercolor paper. You'll notice immediately that I'm doing all of the layers for this zine in grayscale, so I'm actually only using black watercolor paint. And that's because the Rizo reads in grayscale and the machine just prints the equivalent values in whatever color ink it is that you want. In this case, we will be printing these branches and some shadow tones in violet. Watercolor is a lot of fun to create textures with and here I'm just using iodized table salt to break up the watercolor into interesting little sunburst textures. Next, I put marker paper over the watercolor paper for the second layer, which will be printed in red. So for this layer, we're doing the blossoms which are pretty much just watercolor blobs. Marker paper is actually really fun for watercolor because the water pools around and creates these interesting watery uneven textures, with the added benefit of it being translucent so I can more easily line up the blossoms with the branches. Another way to create your second layer is by using a window during the daytime or a light table or light box to see the first layer underneath your second sheet of paper. So let's actually talk a little bit about registration for a project like this. You'll see what the results look like for this scene later, but my recommendation is that if you're doing something super traditional like what we're doing, you should plan something that doesn't need tight registration or even better, will benefit from misregistration by having different elements separated out by color. So with a zine, for example, I just have a rough idea in my head that I want it to have a bunch of different textures and things going on there and it should still look good even if the registration is really off. I make sure also to mark my edges since my paper is smaller than both my watercolor paper and my marker paper which are 9 by 12. So you'll remember that the zine is going to be printed on 8.5 by 11 or letter sized paper. And also you want to create some registration marks to make sure that all your layers are lining up properly. So that's also the second reason why I am making some small marks. My last layer uses a soft 2B Conte pencil, also on marker paper. Conte or even charcoal makes really nice dark black lines with a lot of that really nice grainy pencil effect. 
And the last layer is going to be in fluorescent pink and it's just going to be line work. We're not trying to do anything too detailed or realistic here because there's already a lot going on with the other two layers and this is just something to just create that third element and texture. I think that fluorescent pink on a cherry pink paper is going to look really cool and also just give the zine a little bit of that surprise element. This zine actually collects some haiku poems that I wrote about spring. As you can see, we're doing everything quite traditionally and I'm even typing everything out on a typewriter. So I've cut out the poems and I'm just arranging them on the sheet of paper using the page ordering that we determined in the earlier tutorial. In order to make all the words face in the same direction while you're flipping the pages once the zine has been folded up, you have to make them face opposite directions in each row. I really recommend making a mock-up before you go to final print because the last thing you want is to have a bunch of prints that don't work once you fold up your zine. So as you can see, I am taping everything to the red layer because I want the words to be in red ink. The last part is actually a simple design for the packaging. I wanted to create a sleeve for the zine because I think it will add a cute handmade crafts element to the zine. And I can also insert my business card and some freebies such as stickers in the zine. Oh, and by the way, before I forget, this zine will be for sale at Kanzi in Toronto and also online. I'll probably do another video later showing you what I'm tabling with. Last year was a lot of fun, but my table was kind of sad. I only had one zine. You can watch my coverage of last year's can zine in the video that I will link below. Anyway, it looks like we're ready to go to print. Alright, so when you're working with multiple layers of artwork, one of the most important things to do is to make sure that you're able to more or less accurately overlap them, just like in screen printing. So what I've done is I have made these arrows on the left side of all of the sheets of paper so on this left edge that's where i've made the arrows and the way the reason works is it works on a centering system so this is how we're going to center all the art pieces when i open up the photocopying function you can see that it comes with this nifty plastic translucent grid guide and when I lift that up, I can put my first layer, which is the pink layer, and I can align the arrow that I have drawn to that arrow. So it's not like a normal laser copying machine because in a laser printer, you're gonna be aligning it to the top left edge, but for the Rezo, you align it on a centering system. So that is the center and that's where the center of your art should also be. And you can also use the rest of the grid system to make sure that your piece is square to the glass. So we're gonna go ahead and photocopy this. I'm gonna put down this cover. I'm gonna turn on the machine. The first layer we're going to do is the pink layer and when I hit that it can sense that there is something on my scanning platen and so under here we have different settings so here's line and then there's this photo setting for standard port and group and there's a duo setting which is when you have a line or photo and then over here is the pencil setting so because the pink layer is done on Conte charcoal, which has a bit of pencil light -like texture, we're going to print it with the pencil mode and I'm going to do a scanning density of darker. And I'm gonna hit okay. And under contrast, I think I want a little bit of contrast. So I'm gonna hit okay. And yeah, so let's go ahead and make the master. So it's going to start making the master based on the settings that we chose. And so that's what that looks like and it looks really good. It actually picked up a lot of detail of the pencil and even the smudging. Let's compare that with the original artwork. So let me just 
grab it from the machine. So using the pencil setting is actually really good, especially if your artwork is also using a pencil-like medium. So I used Conte pencil and so it's even grainier and the Rezo print actually retained that nature and it even included some of that smudging. And so Conte is actually really dark. It's pretty much like charcoal black. So what that did is it just told the Rezo to just translate that line work into pink. So a common misconception when people are preparing their files for the Rezo is to do a straight conversion on the pink layer into grayscale, but that is going to cause the grayscale layer to be too light. Because as you can see over here, this dark color is just telling the Rezo to print it solid on this color. So you definitely do not want to go too light when you're working with light colors. All right, so let's proceed to print that on the pink paper. looks really good. Pink on pink looks so good. It actually made the pink more saturated and vibrant and even more fluorescent. So this is what it looked like on the plain white paper. So as you can see, there's a huge difference between the color of that fluorescent pink when I printed it on this cherry pink paper versus when it was on the white paper. All right, so for the red layer, because it's got a lot of watercolor textures to it, I don't think line would be the correct setting for that. And I think also because it has text, we're gonna do a duo setting. So the priority, I think the priority should actually be photo, because who cares about my poems? We just want to see the watercolor textures. So I'll hit okay and uh, let's make the master. Alright, so that actually looks really nice. It kept a lot of the watercolor textures that we have on the original. So this is what the original looks like. So as you can see, it's translating the artwork and the watercolor texture into tiny, tiny dots. And where the artwork is darker, such as over here. The Rezo also printed it in a, I wouldn't say darker red, but just a more solid red with the dots more closely spaced together and with the ink more saturated. Whereas where it's lighter, of course, it's also lighter. And the words are actually still very readable. So. I really quite like it and it looks like it's doing a little bit of that screen toning effect on the text. So I think that looks really, really good and I'm really, really happy with it. All right, so we're going to now print the violet layer. So if we go over to the panel where it says select an operation mode, yes, we could do dual color. And what that's going to do is it's going to ask us to place the original for print color one and then start and then the original for print color two and then start and it's just going to kind of make the masters in a row and print the two colors in a row however we're not going to be using a dual color mode for this particular layer even though we will be printing the red and the violet together because i've actually already just made the red layer on position one and I've just switched out the violet into position one as well and I'm just doing that because for this demonstration purposes I just want to go through all the settings and I want to make sure each layer is correct before I start making masters left and right so for the purple layer I think that there's no text so we don't need to do dual photo I think we're just gonna do straight up photo and I'm just gonna do standard and I think that I want to show more detail. I'm not sure if that means I have to bump up the contrast or make it less contrasty. So I'm gonna go less contrast. Hopefully that will show more of the detail. Okay, that is definitely not the right setting. It is too light. So 
let's try that again so let's go master making let's do photo again and this time let's do the highest value and hopefully that will bring out more of the line work okay that is definitely way 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 better than whatever is going on here so let's keep this one Alright, so that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up. Please like, subscribe, and leave a comment in the comment section below. For example, if you'd like to see me do a summer version of this zine with different colors and possibly different materials, let me know. Alright, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much.